Cool. I think it's referred to as a social practice type of thing where you're kind of working with mediums and people and things that you can't really control them, but you could kind of nudge the whole movement in a certain direction. So this is gonna be the picture. And I think when the intentions are pure and people could feel it, and like we are like the real Miami, in my opinion. Seeing people already heading it up. It's not a membership based thing where you have to like buy your way into it. Um, I think that, that we're engaging our city right under everybody's noses the same way that graffiti exists or street art exists. <laughs> Dog, congrats, dude. Woo. I was in uh, halfway through a pub sub and then I saw the drop on Discord and didn't even have time to change. Just jumped on the bike, sprinted over here. I kind of had a feeling where it was at. You like zooming in and checking out the pictures a little bit and uh, happy I was at the right spot at the right time. <laughs> Got it, bro. My name is David Anasagasti, and I go by A Hole Sniffs Glue, and I paint on stuff, draw on things, and that's pretty much it. In a way, it's a photography project, you know, like. I go out, I find something that's interesting, I paint it, and then based on like where it is, how it is, like I try to make the most like nicely framed picture that I possibly can with my cell phone, but also giving enough context where somebody that lives in that area or knows that area better would have dibs on figuring out where it is. Show some love to Lil Havana. Then I post the picture. I'll wait a minute later, and then I put it on Instagram and I put it on Twitter just to kind of like apply pressure, you know, to let them know like, hey, there's other people that might get to this first. And that's pretty much it. I usually try to do the whole entire thing and get out of there before they show up. Look, somebody said they're a block away. <laughs> it's sick uh, to have like a local artist to make his art accessible. And, you know, eventually my whole apartment will have these sleepy eyes everywhere. Geographies of Trash happened from, well, I did a collaboration on a, a bicycle jersey with this company called Rafa. Uh, they're like pretty big in, in the bike scene. And I didn't want to push something that wasn't something that I was believing in. I wasn't riding bike, I wasn't fit like, or doing any you know, active stuff. And I told them, I was like, look, uh, I want to get on a bike and try it out and see what's up. So they helped me get a bike. And then I started riding the bike. I got really heavily into it. And like, I was always painting on random things, you know, like it wasn't just like, oh, now I'm gonna start doing geographies of trash. It was more of like that I just figured out a way of like, all right, if I'm on the bike and there's a bunch of trash laying around, even if the only person that sees it painted or people that drive by or the person that picks it up, at least it's something cool to show like, but only until I started uh, doing stuff with Ann Jossick over there, like that's when we were like trying to figure out a way of creating something that was like with the incubator structure and they had access to like archiving things and everything and I was doing stuff with NFTs. So I was like, man, why not just mash it all together and do it that way? Because then the project really is like something that just happened and it got steroids, it got crazy and I just kept on feeding it. I proposed to David that I would like him to come to the incubator and run his entrepreneurial residency. So the trade was that he would essentially come with an idea that we're going to help him to crystallize through, you know, again, many lenses, you know, bringing many specialists from the university, people from art history, people from museum side, and uh, geographies of trash were kind of formulated through this process. And as the part of his contribution, he was going to really help our young fellows here, students from many different departments at the university who are interested in entrepreneurship, to really look at their own projects and he would advise them. The whole network kind of builds up a very kind of interesting possibility of uh, bringing his expertise, bringing his uh, natural kind of serial entrepreneurial talent to 
push these young people to trust in themselves, to um, walk away from fear of failing, because I think that's what David doesn't have. David's work ethic is unbelievable. And I think that uh, it's really one of the many, many gifts he's given to our incubator fellows by having us with him is that he is relentless in how he pursues his, uh, his work and how he distributes it, how he reaches out and builds community and basically gives our fellows an example to model in their own careers, you know, to really understand what it takes to be an independent artist regardless of whatever support they might have in their careers, they still have to own their own path and build their own journey. It was something that I felt that I could tend it and do it, and it was kind of like this, uh, this postcard via trash that was coming out of Miami. But like, there are like a lot of things that people look down on in, you know, in Web3 or in in crypto and NFTs, but I feel that that's not where, where we're at with it. I feel that we're using it for its original in, intention, which is to, to archive and to document. And for me, the more that I focus on that project, the more that it gets me back on the bicycle. So that's what I get out of it. Like I make no money off of the trash. It's more of like creating like this, this movement. And via that movement, we're creating community and there's people from all walks of life. And for me, that's priceless. The image is the picture that I initially took. Uh, I take that and I put it as an NFT picture. I put the, the title, which is from the last one from the collection and I add one to it. I embed the, the Instagram link into, the, into the, the NFT. So that way forever, that conversation that happened during that hunt is still there. And then I put the, the type of object that it is, the medium and the location. And I feel that's enough to, to document the trash piece. And then I send it right back to them for free, you know? There's plenty of trash out there but the more unique and the more specifically cool thing and the more that I think of like, this will look cool in somebody's house or this will look cool, somebody trying to get this into their house, you know? So those are the things that kind of like, you know, make me decide on what it is that I'm gonna paint. But also like knowing that I'm giving people this opportunity to get something. Like I started thinking about like, man, like somebody threw this out here without having no idea what was gonna happen. And it kind of makes this like fairy tale story of like that, how far can we elevate this thing? The matter if they joined in a week, if they joined a year ago, every, it turns out in like a couple of days, everybody acts like they've been here forever. It's like a family thing almost with trash though. It's just, it's really humbling, you know, to be a part of something so, so beautiful. And, and I see it's gonna be a long lasting thing, just like our city, you know? Now I would never think to bring trash home, you know? Like, especially going through the pandemic with how everything was going, you're thinking picking up trash, but in the same time, it's like such a cool experience that everybody's trying to get into it. And then the NFT aspect is just another, whole nother level for it. It's another verification. This guy is a force. You know, he's inspirational. I'm an artist as well, like a lot of these guys. And you know, I have this stuff hanging around my house. So I walk around and it's like, it's motivation for me. I'm like, this guy, look what he does, you know, and it pushes me, you know? So there's a lot behind this project that I like. And it's like, you know, it's, you don't want to miss it. You know, like you don't want to miss saying something because there's so many things. It's a nice big family community of trash lovers. We would have not known each other other than the art itself, so. Yeah. It's, it's a cyclical uh, support system that we have. The trash. Organically brought us speaking. Yeah, yeah, the, the trash, trash brought us together. Brought us together. <laughs> <laughs> this type of uh, creating a, a space for people with some sort of like incentive to be there or to collect, you know, I think that that's something that there's so many different things that, that could be done, but I feel to be able to do it via trash, via just giving time to this, like, I feel it's time well spent. 
you know, and only time will tell if I'm diluting myself or if it's a big disaster or whatever. But in the meantime, I feel that this is the experiment. We're talking about a guy, we saw 1,500 paintings. What do you, where, where, I, I never saw 1,500 paintings, or, or not even 1,500 posters of anything, you know? David doesn't exist. He's, a, he's like a, a white unicorn, you know? He's different than the rest, you know? He's, uh, and humble. He doesn't even own a car, he doesn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't need a car. He, does, he has his bicycle. He has, uh, he's, uh, He's a powerful artist, very powerful, you know. He's, uh, I admire David, you know. He's like, for me, he's like my son, you know. David's like my son, yeah. That's what I can say. I've been working with Alfred, I think, like four years. I was with other galleries, a bunch of them, and Alfred was more of like a, a regular dude that I felt was like, you know, down to earth and brought him a couple pieces. He moved them. Then I started taking stuff out of other galleries and then just brought them here and been here ever since. Dude's been looking out for me, so it's pretty cool. He's going to be in every museum and he's going to be in, he's going to be in, uh, in the big pages of the history of art. I saw the same thing. Warhol was the same thing. You know, they were, they were thirty, forty thousand dollars you know, in the 1970s, you know? And then now, you know, you pay me $40, 50000000 million for those things, you know? It's the same kind of stuff, you know? Grab this fine piece of wood. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. All right, taking a flick. What up, dog? He's been part of the Discord a couple months now, and he has maybe like seven pieces by now. We've implemented a bunch of different rules as we've gone just because like the project isn't bulletproof, but we do everything we can to keep it fair and the whole democratized like, you know, thing like at, on the forefront. So like you could only get one a day. If you get more than one a day, like the community hates on you for doing that. So it's, it's a matter of like figuring out ways of implementing things that could keep the thing moving smoother and it just doesn't become like me doing office work on the street, you know. We've tried a bunch of different things. A lot of things did not work, uh, but I feel that where it's at right now, it's really like working on its own with the nudging of me and, and the moderators as well. So the moderators, they're, they're four dudes, they're friends, they're awesome, they're fans, they're believers in this thing, and they help orchestrate all this stuff. And it takes a lot of like-minded people to wanna to do this. I think like when we did the Wolfsonian, the, the little, we called it the people's bunker. When we wrapped up the, you know, the, the guardhouse, there was an ability to put light inside of it. Well, what color do we pick? All right, we'll vote on it every other day and figure out what light, what color we change it. It doesn't mean much to the outside world, but the ones that are in our community, it shows that like you matter, you know, and, and like your time is valuable. Even the person that threw away the trash matters too, in this case. The community grew itself and we just, uh, gave the tools to let it flourish as, as much as it did so far. The way I see this project is more of a community building and we help each other and it's very grassroots based here in Miami. And I think we all came together otherwise it, through the discord where we wouldn't meet each other or we come from different walks of life and we wouldn't have met each other on the street if it wasn't for this Discord. And this Discord brings people from all walks of life. Everybody's here, and thanks a lot for coming through. We are at the Trial Theater here in the Gables. It brings me joy, you know, like genuine joy to, to hear some of these people share their feelings on a platform for other people to see and be open and, and for them to know, like, I don't know what's going on with, with your, your regular life, but you got this here and you're a part of it. 
On top of which, of course, like Dave's sobriety and uh, his journey in his sobriety and how I've had my own and how I've had a history of that in my family. And so I definitely just resonated with Dave on a lot of different levels and I just wanted to help the guy out however I could. It really is my beacon of, of, of life for me in my life a lot of times and I know it is for a lot of people and I think, I think it should be shared with the world, you know, as much as I can. And so that's why I'm here doing it, you know. His sobriety, I am, I am, I think that has made a huge impact on his art and he's a huge influence um, in a lot of people and right now he's an example of, of somebody that has come out of a situation and become a much uh, better human being. Like I'm gonna, I'm not giving up, you know, I'm giving up on myself. Uh, and I did that already enough. Geographies of Trash, Art Cycling by David Angoski in A. Hole Smith's group from Leave and Bear in Commission of the City of North Miami Beach do hereby proclaim today Geographies of Trash Day to honor and recognize a theme project. Simply him being here and having ideas like Geographies of Trash inspires other such projects. So David himself is inspirational, but this project uh, is even more so in that our students and faculty, and myself included, are inspired by uh, his creativity and uh, his commitment to our community. I think that the moment that we're in right now is so unique on so many different levels and to think that we're activating this, you know, this trash, whether people like it or not, like we're gonna exist. If you're cooking, you gotta give attention to every single one of the burners. And I think that that's something that's one of my strengths to make sure that if I give something the time of day, I'm gonna see it to the end, you know, and this thing is far from done. So.